Today I'm going to be showing you how to install the Nissan Datascan software as well as install the drivers for the PLMS cable. I'll show you how to register it. I'll talk about what computers this will work on and I'm uh, briefly going to talk about some similar software and other uh, things you can try as far as troubleshooting and everything. Before we get started, I do want to go over what computers you can actually use Nissan Datascan with. Uh, short version is it has to be a Windows computer. Um, most traditional laptops and some convertible laptops like uh, tablets will work, but they have to use a, uh, it's called an x86 style processor, which is basically going to cover anything made by Intel or AMD over the last few years. Um, what's not compatible are any Macs, so sorry, no MacBooks, no MacBook Pro, stuff like that, no Chromebooks. Um, and uh, anything that uses like an ARM processor, which are rare, but if you have like a Surface RT tablet, for example, or any Android tablets, iPad, stuff like that, none of those will work. So it has to be a Windows computer. Uh, if you have an Intel Mac, you can do this through Bootcamp, which is a way of running Windows, um, or you might have some success in something like VMware, VMware or Parallels but they kind of have iffy USB support, so not generally recommended. Short version is even if you just have to buy a cheap $100 Windows laptop, that's gonna be what you want. So the first thing we wanna do is install the driver software for the PLMS cable. That's the console cable you actually have, and the driver software will just tell your computer how to actually use it. So go ahead and open your web browser. I'm using Google Chrome, but Edge or whatever is fine too and you're gonna to go to plmsdevelopments.com. Uh, your cable would have also come with a software, or I'm sorry, with a uh, piece of paper that says where to download this from. Uh, but on here, just hit uh, console cables at the top, and then all the way at the bottom, you'll see a link here that says drivers for USB console cables. Click that, and then uh, it's got two links here, uh, one for Windows 98, one for basically everything else. Uh, this says Win 10, I think it actually does work on Windows 11 as well. Uh, this computer is Windows 11, so that's the one we're gonna download. And it's a pretty quick download, so just let it go ahead and do its thing. All right, once your download is done, this sounds weird, but I actually don't recommend clicking it down here. Um, open your file browser, which is usually this icon. Um, click on that and go to your downloads folder, which is here, if I can click and you'll see it downloaded a zip file here. It looks like a folder, but it's not really a folder. It's a compressed folder. Um, just to make things easy, what we're gonna do is right click on this and hit extract all. It'll ask where you want to extract the contents to and I just leave the, the option blank or at default, hit extract and it's gonna quickly unzip all the contents of that file we downloaded into their own folder. It also opens it up here. So we don't really have to do anything with this folder, but just take a note of where you're located right now. So I'm on my downloads folder in the subfolder I just made. Uh, so those, this is our zip file, and then this is the folder that I just made. Once that's done, you can go ahead and plug your PLMS cable in. And sometimes windows will pop up and say, oh, I'm trying to find drivers, can't find drivers, whatever. Um, sometimes it auto-installs and you get lucky, but I'm going to assume that it didn't auto-install. So now, uh, we need to get to the device manager to actually install the drivers. So click the start key and uh, just type device manager. You can just search in the little box down there and it should be uh, at the top of the list. I don't know why there's two, but go ahead and just open the device manager. And you'll normally see it look like this. Under other devices, there's a USB serial port and you can see it has a little yellow exclamation mark next to it. That means that it hasn't found drivers for it. So we fix that, just right click on it and hit uh, update driver. It gives you two options. One is to search automatically and the other is to browse for your, your computer for drivers. This isn't gonna work, which is why we're here. So click browse my computer and it'll ask where you wanna look for those drivers. Now that's the folder we just unzipped. So click browse and use this little window to navigate to it. Uh, if you remember, ours was in the downloads folder, and then this was the folder that it unzipped. You don't have to worry about like digging into any of these subfolders. We just need the sort of parent folder here. So just select that, just click on it once, and then click OK. And you can see it plugs that in here, it has that folder selected, and it automatically includes subfolders, which is good, we want that selected. Then just hit next, and you'll see it found the drivers in that folder and it installed them. This might take longer, and you might actually get a pop-up from Windows asking if you want to install them. Obviously, go ahead and say yes. Um, 
Sometimes when you do this, um, you'll still see another device. Uh, and sometimes it even just says USB serial port. If it, if it does, just repeat that process. Um, the cable is kind of two devices in one, so sometimes Windows doesn't really figure it out and you have to do it twice. But um, once we're done, you can see now it has a PLMS console interface here and it has COM number five assigned to it. This is, without getting too technical, it's a virtual COM port number. So when you run the software, it will have to be looking through port number five to find the cable. All right, so your cable is installed, your drivers are ready to go, we're all done with the cable side of things. Next thing we can do is install the data scan software itself. You can go ahead and close all this, and uh, if you still have it open, doesn't matter, just go back to your web browser, and uh, we're gonna go to nissandatascan.com. You may have also gotten an email, well, you should have also gotten an email that'll have a link to it. Um, they sell various different versions. The one we want is Nissan Data Scan 1. And uh, you can just hover over it or you can click on it. And we're going to go to the downloads page here. Uh, they have a bunch of different language packs. They have the old versions, all that kind of stuff. We just want to download the la latest version, which is Nissan Data Scan 1.63. So just let that do its thing. It downloads right away. It's a very small file. Now, when you open it, this is where some people get confused. You see one that says Nissan data scan, you think that's what you need to jump into. Ignore that. You want this one that says it's setup and the type is application. It's actually setup.exe. That's what we're gonna run. So just double click on that. Usually Windows will ask for permission. Hit yes. And this is a pretty straightforward installer. I'm just clicking okay a whole bunch. So click okay. Begin the installation by clicking the button below. This one. Now, sometimes as it's going through here, yep, there it is, you get a, a message like this. It's basically trying to install a file that might already be on your computer. That's if you want to keep the file, you can just hit yes. If it does it multiple times, just repeat, hit yes for all. And that's it, just, it just installed successfully. So it's pretty quick and easy because it's a small application. So that's done, we're all done there. We don't have to worry about that. We can actually close our downloads folder. Um, notice I kept our browser open because we're actually gonna go back to this website here in a moment. All right, now that the software is installed, we need to go ahead and launch it. So just go over to your start button. And sometimes you'll see it at the top in the recently added section. If you don't see it, you can just scroll through um, your, your program folders. They're in alphabetical order and you might see it there under Nissan Data Scan. If you still can't find it, just type in Nissan. It'll probably come up. Uh, and just make sure we're opening the app here. See, it says it's an app. It's the red and blue icon. Go ahead and fire that up. And you're gonna get a warning saying it's unregistered because we just installed it and it's a fresh install. So just click OK. And now at the top, click Help, and then Activation. This is your main activation uh, window. This is kind of where you do everything. Keep this open. We're gonna be jumping around a little bit, but don't close this for now. Um, you would have received an email from us, or rather from Datascan, um, with your registration info. If you don't remember seeing it, go to your email and check your junk folder or your spam folder. A lot of times they go there. Um, I'm gonna to go to ours, and if you see, I got an email here saying, here's your Nissan Data Scan 1 user account. And it's basically gonna have your name, email, and your password on here. Uh, the big thing is you have to remember is that all of this is case sensitive. So I just put this as CCP Dino because this is our Dino laptop. Uh, so this is our first and last name here, and then e our email and password. You already know your name and you know your email, but again, it's case sensitive, so pay attention. Uh, you want to enter your name and email exactly as they're displayed here in your software activation window. So I'll put in CZP Dino, and then for email, it's czpdino at gmail.com. You can copy and paste it if you want, but that's good enough. Then you're gonna hit generate code, and it makes this giant alphanumeric code here. Uh, next thing you wanna do is just using your mouse, highlight, the click and drag, highlight the entire thing, then you can right click on it and hit copy. You can also use the uh, shortcut key, Control-C. Uh, now we can go back over to our web browser. You can just click Nissan Data Scan 1. Make sure you're on 1 and not Dash or anything like that. And uh, then over here, click NDS 1 User Login. And that's going to open up a new tab. It's a very plain looking window here. And you just put in your same email, andre email address and your password just like you saw in that email earlier. So for me, that's ccpdino at gmail.com. And password's pretty easy to remember, so uh, you can see it here. I'm not copying and pasting it, I'm just gonna type it in. So it's ccpdino1. 
right? Is that right? That's right. Then hit login. So here it shows your name, email, and how many activations you have and how many activations you've used. Data scan actually does give you four activations in case your computer is ever stolen, damaged, broken, or you have to wipe the hard drive and reinstall. They give you kind of they give you some grace there, so you're not you're not screwed if you ever have to activate it again. So click activate software, and this is where we're going to paste in that registration code. So if you remember over here in the Nissan Data Scan software, we had copied this uh, registration code, which you can do again if you need to. Uh, just go back over here. Click in this box, right click, and click paste. And there's our registration code. Hit generate activation key, and it's gonna give you a corresponding key here. So now, we're gonna click and highlight this. And just be careful here, you wanna make sure that you select this like perfectly. Just make sure you're not uh, getting an extraneous space or you, know, you didn't miss a letter or anything like that. You wanna copy the entire thing. Then right click on it and hit copy. Now we're gonna go back over to our data scan software and in the activation key box, right click and hit paste. So we basically just generated the code, plugged it into the website, the website gave us an activation key back and we're pasting that back into the software. Then click unlock and you'll get a message saying it has been successfully activated. If it wasn't successful, it means there was probably a typo somewhere. Remember it's case sensitive and it's very picky. Everything has to match perfectly. So just hit okay. Now you probably saw that message said to uh, restart the software before you can use it. Uh, so just hit the X button and exit out of it. And you can go back to Windows and fire it back up if you need to. And now it's ready to go. Notice that it didn't complain about um, registration this time. If you want to check, uh, go to the settings page here and then go to communication. And uh, you'll see it has a COM port number. It often auto finds the cable we're using. If you remember from a little bit earlier, our cable said it was COM port number five, and it actually does show that here. If it doesn't show the same number, don't worry about it as long as this auto button is selected. As long as that's checked, 99% of the time, it'll find it just fine. If you happen to be using a 96, click this button here. Uh, if you're not using a 96, then don't worry about it. And I recommend not clicking auto connect to ECU because if there's ever a time when it's not plugged in or something, it kind of just stalls and hangs on for a while. All right, so now we have the software installed and it's all configured. I'm gonna go ahead and relaunch Nissan Data Scan. Now I'm out at the car. I have my PLMS cable plugged into the car's console port and the car is keyed on. It doesn't have to be running. Obviously it can be, but for now, to keep things quiet, I'm just gonna have it keyed on. And I still have my communication settings all on automatic. So I'm not touching any of that. I'm just gonna hit connect. And you can see this progress bar will always be running. That just means that it's maintaining a constant connection. Um, and that's good. That's what, that means we're connected and everything just lit up to show that we are connected to the car. And before you dive into you know running codes and looking at all your data displays and everything, the one last thing you might want to check, which you can't do until it's connected, is this option that says Data Display ECM. This is the menu where you select what you want to display on those gauges. So for example, one I like to do is to show uh, the regular O2 sensor and then O2 sensor right hand. That way I have both O2 sensors since this is a car with two. Um, you can see everything else is pretty straightforward stuff, water temp, battery voltage, etc. So make your selections there, then just hit save. And then when you're ready, hit data display. And this will show all the registers that it's currently monitoring. This car is not running, so it looks pretty tame right now. Um, but it does still show like the coolant temperature and the battery voltage. And uh, the other thing that's really helpful on here is to go to active test. This will let you change some of the uh, solenoids and the control features that the car has, um, that console can control. The big one that I like to use is fuel pump on and off. Really great for bleeding the fuel system if you need to take off a fuel line. Uh, you can check if your VTC, sorry, VCT solenoids are working here. And um, setting a AAC value is a really easy way to confirm if your idle controller is responding normally. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you guys found this helpful. Uh, please be sure to subscribe if you want to see more and leave a like if you like this. Also, if you have any other questions or there's something giving you trouble, just message us uh, on our website or leave a comment below. Thanks.